I'm gonna give you the four best lifts to fix your finish in the snatch, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com, and if this is your first time to the channel, and you wanna learn how to become a better athlete, you wanna get more explosive, you wanna be stronger, and you wanna become a powerhouse, make sure that you comment down below with whatever it is you're training for, you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so that we can help you become a champion. So over the last 10 years here at Garage Shank, we've had a lot of athletes come through our doors. We've had a lot of Olympic weightlifters come through our doors who struggle in the snatch. They struggle to have a connection off their hip into that finish. They tend to jump back, they'll throw their head really far back, they'll jump forward and miss that bar forward, they'll loop the bar behind, whatever it might be, they're completely out of position when they're trying to finish the lift of the snatch. And this is a very consistent problem throughout the world of Olympic weightlifting. The population of athletes tends to be a little inconsistent because no one has really defined what it means to have a strong finish. So before we jump into those four big lifts, we need to define and go through what that big finish means. What does it mean to have a good, strong finish? And if we remember, the big key is that as our knees come back off the floor and the knees will then push forward after the bar travels around the knees, the knees will push forward, but we must keep a flat foot as the knees go forward. We must keep our chest forward as the knees go forward. Around 65 degrees between the foot and the knee and around 65 degrees for your trunk position when the, the chest is forward and, and where your hips is gonna be in relation to your trunk. So we've got to understand that when our knees are forward, our foot is flat, our chest is forward and that is what's going to set us up for a very strong long finish. We want that long exaggerated finish that's going to get us into a tight catch position in the snatch. So that first lift that we're going to go over is a variation lift, okay? This is the high hang snatch and the reason why I love this position is because the, the eccentric movement that goes into the high hang snatch, when the lifter starts with the bar at their hips, they will eccentrically lower so through a three to five second eccentric contraction, now all of a sudden the lifter is going to feel their knees travel forward. They'll feel their chest travel forward while they're applying pressure through the heel. So if we educate the lifter on the proper way to execute this high hang snatch, now they're gonna feel the knees forward. Now they're gonna feel the chest forward and that flat foot. And what ends up happening is as the lifter commences the high hang snatch, their hips will come underneath that torso, the knees will still have flexion, then they'll exaggerate a big knee extension, they'll achieve plantar flexion on the ankle, and then the elbows will come back into that good, strong catch position. So because the high hang snatch has that eccentric portion of the lift, it creates a better mind-muscle connection, it creates better proprioception, for the Olympic weightlifter and now they can fix that finish. So that second key lift to fixing that finish is a pause at the reciprocation point snatch. So the way I like to coach this is that the athlete will feel their knees come back and then as the knees come back, the bar goes over that kneecap. Now they're gonna push those knees forward. Four to six inches above the kneecap is where that reciprocation point is. If we can think about Jin Chun Kuo when she lifts, those knees go forward just past when the barbell just passes that kneecap. That's where the pause at the reciprocation point will be. Because of that pause, now there's a little bit better mind-muscle connection for the weightlifter. They can feel that strong position that they need to achieve from a full lift. They can do this over time. They can feel the knees go forward with that flat foot. They can feel that chest staying forward. And when they come out of that pause position, the hips come under the torso then the knees extend, we achieve that plantar flexion in the ankle, the upper body is active and they achieve and they are educated by this lift to achieve that big strong finish. And that's what we've got to remember with these variations is that the, the variations are educating the lifter on what positions they need to hit when they're going from that full lift. That third big lift to fix your finish in the snatch is the no feet snatch. 
Okay, so what does that even mean? No feet snatch, right? So the no feet snatch is we are gonna put our feet in the position that they will be in when we catch a snatch. And they're not allowed to move from that position. They can still plantar flex on the finish and then dorsiflex into the catch, but they're not allowed to slide or move out or back or forward. And what this does is it educates the lifter to have better connection with the movement. This is a movement that I was taught by Norik Vardanian, one of the best technical lifters on the planet. His father is probably one of the best technical lifters of all time. And he used this lift quite a bit. And this is something that we've used here at Garage Strength to help develop our youth lifters that have gone from being on youth world teams all the way to making senior Pan Am teams. And, and this is a very important aspect that we've utilized because it helps the lifter feel that connection. It prevents the lifter from jumping all over the place. It helps them learn the proper knee movement while achieving that hip flexion over a long period of time. And then it helps them feel that finish to get to the heels quickly in the catch. So that fourth key lift that we like to use to teach our lifters to have that big, strong finish is the slow snatch. And so what this means is we're gonna take that lift slow from the floor. We want a one, two, three count to the knee. Okay, so the knees will come back over a three count. Then as the, as the bar goes over the knees, the knees reciprocate forward. Once they reciprocate forward, now it lights the lift up. So we wanna try and learn the position of the high hang snatch. We wanna learn this pause and the reciprocation point and we wanna remember those feelings when we're doing that slow snatch. So the slow snatch is gonna transfer really, really well to the full competitive movement. It's also gonna help us increase our back strength off the floor. It's going to help us learn that proper pattern and rhythm of acceleration. The lift should sound almost exactly like a zipper where it's zip, and that's something that we learn in the slow snatch, it's not only the, the position of the knees, it's also the rhythm and the tempo of the lift. And then because of the setup, because of how precise it is around the knees, the knees come forward, the hips stay flexed, the foot stays flat, then the lifter really starts to learn that vertical finish and that leads to monster PRs. So utilize these four key lifts to help you improve your finish on the snatch. Recognize that it's gonna take a whole bunch of time to develop this strong finish. It could take six to 12 months of periodizing these exercises into your programming effectively so that you can constantly make those improvements to increase that big snatch. And now all of a sudden, you're gonna develop into a champion, but it takes time and patience. If you want more information about Olympic weightlifting, you can click on this video right now. Until next time, guys, peace.